Hey, hey, hey! So I'm here with my husband, Jason, and we're going to talk about a movie that we kind of recently watched. Actually, been a minute. Um, but it's a Netflix movie, and it's called In the Tall Grass. Uh, maybe you've seen it. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, supposedly, there is a book. Um, it's ba It's a movie based on a book written by Stephen King and John Hill, who I think is like his son-in-law. Anyway, anyways, um, so we want to talk about it because <laughs> and kind of review it because it's an interesting movie. It's it's a very interesting movie, and it's it needs to be talked about. It needs to be discussed. Okay, this I just like I. It's confusing. It's delightful. It's funny. It's scary. It's a little gory. It's a little psycho. Like it's got every. It's got something for everybody in that movie. So the movie is basically about. Here it just came out. Um, this brother and sister. It starts out and they're driving down this highway and you don't know why, and then you find out that they're basically driving somewhere. So that she can give, she's pregnant and she's going to give her baby up for adoption. Um, because the baby's father isn't involved, doesn't want to be involved, whatever happened. They broke up, whatever happened. Um, so they're driving to that town. She, did she get tired or have to use the bathroom? They pulled over to the side of the road or did he have to go to the bathroom? I think she got sick. Yeah, maybe she got sick, you know, got nauseous and they pulled over so she could get out of the... Uh, the car and get sick and um, they were next to this cornfield and I, I will say as somebody who is from Nebraska who is from are you sure it was cornfield it looked like a corn I mean it's in the tall grass so it's like grass but it reminds me of a cornfield yeah, we live in Nebraska and um, as somebody who lives within driving distance of the setting for children of the corn the town where it was set um, and growing up um, with that um, I'm pretty familiar you know we all we all know Children of the Corn if you haven't I encourage you to go watch it and um, it's a good movie they're good they're good movies they're good movies not one of us um, but it reminded me of that so they pulled over in this huge field and um, this tall grass and then they happened to stop and there's like a church building um, I don't think they knew it was a church. I mean, you can kind of tell that it's a church. You can look at it and tell because it had yeah. a steeple and just the way it was built. But, like, the cars in the parking lot were old and, like, dusty. It wasn't like, you know, if you drive by a church and you see cars in the parking lot and they're clean. You know, they they don't look like they've been there for 30 years, right? These well, cars. The building looked ran down, too. Like, it, it looked like an old church. Abandoned building. Old abandoned mm -hmm. church building. And the cars... And something you don't notice at first is that you notice later on in the movie is that uh, the, there's different decades of cars parked out near this church building. Um, which obviously, you know, if, you, if you've ever been on a road trip, sometimes you have to stop somewhere to use the bathroom or even at a rest stop and you see some kind of questionable cars, you know, cars that look like they've been there for a while. You're not going to like... Typically, you're not going to go up to them. I might after watching this movie now, see. But, like, you're not going to go up to them and kind of try and figure out what year they are. You know what I mean? You're not going to go up and try and really inspect the car and see much about it. Because we've also watched horror movies about, you know, we get told, you know, people slashing your ankles underneath, you know, hiding underneath cars or hiding behind, you know, the sides of cars or something like that, waiting to kidnap you. So, probably not a good idea. But it was during the day. When they stopped and they pulled over and she was reading a book and all of a sudden she like heard this kid screaming for help in this field, this grass field. And she being pregnant, I think, and you know, being a good person, how are you going to hear a kid scream for help? Help. Can you help me? Please come help me. I'm lost. Please come help me. How are you going to walk away from that? How are you going to just keep driving and being like... I think we will now, but, um, before, 
before the movie, you know, we're definitely the type of people to stop, you know, um, you know, get animals off the side of the road or get them out of the road. You know, we, we try to help people as much as we can. So of course she talks her brother into going into the field. And she goes in after him. And at first it seems normal, right? You know, they're running and it's whatever, you know, it's just, a, just like tall grass. Like it's just grass. How much harm could it be? What could it hurt? So they get in this grass and they're running around and running around and running like in circles. And they realize that they get separated and they realize that even though their voices sound like right next to each other or like very close to each other, they're actually very far apart. Yeah. And, um, so eventually they're like, okay, well let's jump up above this grass, which by the way is like six feet tall. And this pregnant woman who could not have been like five, five, maybe five, six, you know, she jumps and somehow she is taller than the grass. They jump both, both of them jump above the grass and they see each other and they're, you know, closer than what they thought. And they're like, okay. So then they keep hollering at each other and they jump up again. And what she jumps up and doesn't see him. Yeah. And they were like talking to each other, like, okay, let's jump again. And they were talking while they were jumping and she jumps and doesn't see him. And I think at that point, that's when she kind of realized they had done fucked up. No, um, that they, that this grass was not your typical grass. Okay. Um, the story continues. They're in the grass. They eventually do stumble upon the boy that they heard calling for help. And, um, well, the brother stumbles upon the boy. The brother stumbles upon the boy and then the, and the sister runs into a grown man. Well, he runs into her. She is well, yeah. kind of staying in one place cause she's pregnant. Like she's, you know, it's hot out. Like she starts to feel nauseous. Like whatever. I think if you've been, if you're a mama, you know that. Um, but he kind of, he finds her and he's like, it's okay. Like, you know, we're just trying to find our son. And then they realize that that's the kid's dad. And they're like, Oh my gosh, like how long have you been looking? And they, of course they don't know. Right. And, um, so it continues with, um, the brother and the boy and then the sister and the dad and they all finally come together at what the main tree in the middle. Well, I know the, the brother and the boy end up getting to the middle where I thought it was a rock. It yeah, been. it's a rock. No, it's not a tree. It's a rock. And the, They're interchangeable in my mind. And the boy touches the rock and then tries to get the brother to touch the rock. Well, and he's telling him, you know, like, how do you know where to go? And he said, oh, the rock tells you. Yeah, the rock. The rock tells you. So you just touch the rock and you like, no, you know how to get out of the grass. Apparently. So the boy touches, he tries to get the brother to touch it. I don't think they actually showed the brother touching it. No. Um, Some, but something happens like right at the last minute. And he, I think he, he hears his sister. I think's what it is. And he takes off. Yeah. She was screaming. Because wasn't she was with the dad? I don't want to. I wasn't going to try and give too many spoilers away, but I may. We may end up talking about some spoilers. But um, the sister is with the boy's dad, and he's just like, you know, come on, whatever. And then the mom jumps out, or no, she the body of the mom grabs the daughter. Is that what it is? Grabs the sister. Grabs the sister. Yeah. Something grabs his sister and... Like, out of the cornfield. Like, she comes out of the cornfield. Out of the grass. She comes out of the grass and, like, grabs her. It's really creepy. Um, And, you know, I think all of these things kind of adding up. And, you know, you're just sitting here watching here going, okay. Okay, you know. Um, of course, knowing that this is based on a book by Stephen King. Stephen King is notorious for twists and turns. I'm sorry. 
he, the man just is. Like, he's a good writer. Just when you think that you're like, oh, I got it figured out. I know who did it. He'll put something else in there, and then he, it'll take you down a completely different rabbit hole. So, um... But then it, um, the, the brother goes running after the sister and um, then it cuts away from them and cuts to this guy driving, was he driving a truck? Something like that. Um, yeah, driving a truck and... Um, Well, he's driving down the same highway that the brother and sister were driving right. down. And um, he's kind of, he sees this church and he sees their vehicle. And he's like, that's kind of weird. And we find out later that he's the father of her baby. Like he's her ex-boyfriend. He's the father of, of, the, baby. of the baby. Um, But he, so that's how he knows like the brother's vehicle. That's how he knows. So he sees their vehicle, so he pulls over and stops, and he's just like, what's going on? And then he looks over, and in the road is the book that she was reading. And so he then, too, goes into the tall grass, because... Um, and you, you can tell, like, he goes over to the car, and the sandwich that she was eating... That like, made her sick. That made her sick. You... It it had like started molding and I think there were bugs on it and stuff. So molding could, and rotting and there was like a trail of ants in there or something. You like could it tell was that some, that some, a period of time had passed since. So they, they infer that there had been a period of time that had passed. Yes. Yeah. So he goes into the the, the tall grass. And he's like yelling out her name, trying to find her because he's. You know, thinking that she's there. And the movie, at this point, now you have the brother, the sister, the little boy, the little boy's dad, a small portion of the little boy's mom, right? Very, very tiny, small part did she play. Um, and then you have the ex-boyfriend, the father of the baby, right? You have these, what is that, five characters? Six. Six characters. So you have these six characters who are all in this tall grass field okay and there is one time uh that the brother is being chased by the father of the boy who has touched the rock and he has become like obsessed with the rock um he claims to know everything if anybody just touches the rock then they'll know everything and he just wants to teach them and he starts preaching like he's a preacher um and the brother's like you're crazy we're running away and then he starts running away the father chases him and um, he ends up tripping over something and landing on the ground and it, the camera kind of pans over and you can see like a skeleton and then it pans over a little bit more and you can see like another skeleton and it's, it, you know, it's kind of like it, things are happening in the same spot that they had before. And one thing that's recurrent, I think that we didn't mention is that the little boy told them dead things don't move. Dead things don't move. So the grass doesn't move where dead things are. Um, which they don't understand at first. But, you know, when she was walking with the dad, the first time she had looked down and saw, like, his wife's purse. And it was kind of, like, scattered. And her IDs. And it looked like a struggle had taken place. So obviously she was nervous to go with him. And now he had touched the rock. He's becoming this, this preacher psycho. And, um... I'm going to end it real here, real quick here. I'm going to start part, ugh, start part two. Okay, we're back. Sorry. I wanted to break it up so that when I upload it, it doesn't... My phone doesn't like super long videos. Okay, it just doesn't. All right. So, basically, as soon as the, the father of the son, whose name is Tobin, um, starts becoming like a, a pre like a psychotic preacher, like a cult leader, um, like very Jim Jonesy. okay? Preaching about the rock is your savior. The rock knows everything. Just give everything to the rock. Sacrifice to the rock. Sacrifice yourself to the rock. Whatever. Um, 
they all realize that they need to get out. And the brother and sister are joined by her ex-boyfriend, who, um, you know, and it, it, which obviously three three brains are better than one. And then they have they have the little boy with them. Tobin's with them, isn't he? I think so. Because the mom, like Tobin's mom, really, she's only in like a handful of scenes. Um, but then they start running and they're running through this field and they see a building that they had actually saw on the, on when they were driving before they had stopped. It's like an old bowling alley or something. And they saw it. Um, it was like an old abandoned bowling alley. Um, and they actually find that in the tall grass. So that kind of tells you where they are in accordance to where the road is. Right. So you think, Oh, well there it's that. So they can just easily cross the road. Um, and I don't want to give away the secret of the story, you know, of the grass. But, um, so they run there and, they, you know, they're running and then the father ends up chasing them. They realize that they have got to get out of the grass. Okay. So then they have to try different plans. And what happens is they try these different plans. And when the plans fail, if one of them dies, it circles back. And the story starts all over again. And then you'll see the brother and sister stop. She gets out and gets sick. Here's the boy yelling for help. Okay. Convinces him to stop. So they stop. And at a certain point, it shows how Tobin got there. And how he got there was his parents had pulled over. Had they pulled over into the church parking lot? I think to like to pee or just for like, you know, when you're traveling with kids, sometimes you pull over for a potty break. Sometimes you pull over to kind of get meals together, whatever. Right. They, they pulled over for some reason. And, and I think it was to walk to, the dog too, maybe to give the dog a potty break. Maybe. But Tobin, I think it was Tobin that heard. A, a man a, a yelling man in the tall grass. Yelling in the tall grass. Yeah saying help help me you know has, can anyone is anyone there can anyone hear me and so he says mom and dad you know these these the, i can hear this guy yelling you know and the parents of course are like well we can't just leave so they take their son and their dog and of course they enter into the tall grass that's how they end up in there and it leads you into and it's basically <laughs> at that point you realize it's a circular uh line of events right because they, you find out that the guy that Tobin hears is actually the boyfriend or the, the baby's daddy. Of the sister. Of the sister. The, the brother and sister that we originally saw. It's, it's her baby's father, her ex-boyfriend. Right. So it's, it's kind of funny. And then they, her ex, I remember her ex-boyfriend and Tobin run into each other. And Tobin's like, oh yeah, I know you you're blah, blah, blah. And he's like, how do you know that? And like, which tells you that they don't, they don't know that it's, it's almost like they're stuck in like a time loop and things just keep repeating and repeating. And, um, but the story ends in a very, not in a way that you would think the movie really, I thought, I don't know if I would say the movie was really well done. It was kind of cheesy, but I feel like, the idea for the story is incredibly well done. I've not read anything like that. Is it similar to Children of the Corn? A little bit. I mean, the secret, the secret of the grass. Um, Spoiler. So, fast forward if you don't want to hear this. The secret of the grass gets put out there, and that's how we get to the end of the movie. Is because of that. Um, we don't want to spoil the end, but right. there were a couple of interesting plot holes um, that I wanted to discuss, and this may contain some spoilers. So I will put spoilers in the title of this video. So if you haven't watched this movie yet, please do. Um, I'm not somebody who, like, if I watch spoilers, then I won't watch the movie. No, if I watch spoilers, I, I'll still watch the movie because it might be a really interesting movie, whether I know what happens or not. So um, so I wrote down some notes. Um so one of the plot holes is um, that I that I thought of anyway was how did the people who got stuck there before them get out? Because we're focused in this movie, we're focused on six characters. You don't see anybody else. 
you see different cars from different decades and time periods in history in the church parking lot. So it's obvious that people from all different times have stopped there. Right. But you don't see anybody else in this cornfield. Grass field. I'm going to say cornfield. Just know that I mean grass field in the tall grass. Um, you know, they've obviously stopped. Uh, you know, they didn't come back to retrieve their cars, so they got lost in the tall grass. Um, which is interesting. And they never address that. They never talk about how, where those cars came from, the people from those cars. That, that's never addressed. No. Um, another thing I had a question about is why the church? Why, like, why a church in particular? Like, was it somewhere, did they worship the rock? Was it people, because it's called the the Rock Church or the Black Rock Church or something like that. Yeah. So it's named. I, I forgot about that. It's named after the rock. So it leads you to believe that these people were worshiping the rock or, you know, it's not a huge church, you yeah, know. It, it's just a little, like a little country church, like old fashioned country church. Like 25, 50 people. Like and one room church, one or one or two. And um, it it was just it was kind of odd for just I mean because you could have had a house there, you could have had a like a store there, you could have had any other building. I'm just like why a church? Um, but another thing that I wanted to point out, I I do think that that kind of plays into the whole dad going crazy preacher type thing well and that that's another thing that we have because um in the very in the first version because like as the show as the movie progresses like you get kind of one version of what happened and then it kind of progresses to another one and then it progresses to another one you can tell that this was has been going on for a while right um well in the first version tobin touched the rock the kid touched the rock in the first version and he didn't go crazy his dad later touched the rock and went completely bonkers. Um, and um, I don't want to say this next part of that sentence, but um, even though later on he, he tries to stop Travis, which is the brother, from touching the rock. And he tells him that if you touch the rock, you'll be stuck here forever. It'll have you forever. So we get from the dad touching the rock and going crazy that if you touch the rock, you'll go insane. But Tobin touches it and nothing happens. And he's just like normal. And then he tries to stop Travis from touching the rock. No, Travis is the boyfriend. Yeah, Travis is the boyfriend. He's the ex-boyfriend, not the brother. Sorry. Um, Travis is the ex-boyfriend who uh, later on in the movie, he t ends up touching the rock to try and figure out how to get everybody out of there. He's basically willing to risk himself to save everybody else kind of a thing. So, um, you know, he's, he tells Travis he'll be stuck there forever, but yet Tobin wasn't. Hang on, it's going to stop. 